Welcome back to Silver Support Expert. Today, I'm going to talk about Leona's laning phase. In this first game, it's Varus, Leona, against Vayne and Morgana. Varus have better wave clear than Vayne, but there is range versus melee matchup in support. So if I play too aggressively, like I normally do, I can get poked down before I engage, which makes the chance of a good engage that much lower. From the enemy's view, they have to use the additional range to zone us out and get to level 3 at the same time or before we do so that they can counterattack on any poor engage using Morgana's Q and the Black Shield. I say level 3 because normally Morgana goes for W at level 1 for the wave push and poke. I use the Leona Auto Q Auto combo on the red to help leash faster. Always try to use your skills to help with the leash. When I get to lane, the first thing I do is to proc the Relic Shield to activate the cooldown before the enemy gets to lane. It helps in pushing the wave for the level 2 advantage and the ward quest. All League of Legends players are different, so you must spend the first wave to analyze your teammates and the opponent's style. As this is 2 range versus 1 range matchup, it is theoretically up to the opponent to decide whether to let us freely farm or make our life hard. But that doesn't mean you must sit back. If you do, you'll likely lose every laning phase. You must leave a fearsome impression on the enemy so that they won't poke you down too much. Threaten them of imminent engage. After all, they're in silver because they don't know about these things. Obviously, if they stand big, then you need to decide to engage or fight another time. It also leaves an impression on your ADCs. If you're playing support that has level 2 advantage, it's good to target it by focusing on early lane push. And by showing aggressive movements, your ADCs will likely clear your minions faster rather than just last hitting. Some ADCs will have their own style, like we do. So if they don't, no need to get mad, just help them out with auto attacks. In this case, we can see that Morgana is playing very passively. So we easily get the level 2 advantage, and engage. But you can see, I don't use my ignite in this case. The reason for that is at the time we hit level 2. You can see me moving forward in time for the level up, and Varus is in good position as well. But unfortunately, an attack on the wrong minion delay our level up, allowing Morgana to distance herself from Varus. So my engage is a bit far from Varus to be threatening. Even if I use Ignite, they can heal back up with potions and normal recovery. So it's better to save it for later. But because I have Aftershock, it's still a good trade regardless. The minions look like it's under the turret, but the caster minions are actually out of range. So, this is a wave in the uncomfortable zone. So, as I don't have enough time, I just ward in the bush. But, if the entire wave was shoved in, I would suggest warding here, or here, in this situation. As sieging is quite threatening, especially against Morgana, use this spare time to ward deep. Finding enemies jungle position and available camps will not only help out your lane, but your teammates as well. Once the minion wave is reset and we're out of the uncomfortable zone, I hide in the bush. This is something Morgana loves to do, as her Q have a good range. But any support with good engage can do this. What this does is, it zones out the enemy as a wrong step forward or face check will be fatal. But they do have the black shield and Q to counter my engage, so I have to be cautious as well. My plan is to remove the ward with auto Q auto, but I was too cautious and was too far resulting in the ward disappearing out of vision. I'm a bit far away from Varus and stunned, but Varus decides to go for some trade, resulting in heavy damage for Varus. This couldn't come at worst time. I'll explain why. You can see there's 4 enemy custom minions against our 3, which means this is a pulling wave. So if we maintain this wave and just last hit, we can drag the minion wave into the enemy's uncomfortable zone, making us decide whether to freeze or look for a fight. On top of that, our jungler, Ramus, is boss side. So, it's an easy gank setup, but this bad move from Varus almost gets him killed. Bane used the E and Morgana used the Q, so there's no threatening skills left against me. I must try to divert the enemy's attention to save Varus. As Vayne is black shielded, my target is Morgana, because she is ranged and is threatening to Varus as well. But as Leona's E flies to the last enemy hit, I fly to Vayne. Luckily this stops Vayne's advancement towards Varus. But with Varus health so low and my skills on cooldown, whereas the enemies are coming back from cooldown, it is now their turn. So I must run for my life. This is where luck or silver thing plays into our advantage. Varus is low on health, 
So, Morgana zones us out by hiding in the bush, like I did earlier, but this is a mistake. This wave is still pulling wave, there's no reason for us to be stepping forward. So, it's not really a threatening zone. For example, from the enemy's view, my zone earlier was a pushing wave. They had to ward or walk up in order to farm, but we don't. And the enemy bot duo have been stuck under the turret since our level 2 advantage. They've been constantly in our sight, so they have no wards in this bush. They do not see Ramus arriving. My thought at this time is that she has black shield and flash available. So if I engage poorly, she might be able to make it out alive. And I have 2 second cooldown on my E. So my choice is to flash Q. But knowing she's without black shield, I think I could have taken the chance to wait for Ramus engage. I see Vayne's mistake of stepping forward, but unluckily I miss my E. And obviously, as Varus' health is low, we must recall, so we shove in the wave and do so. Luckily that Morgana kill I got gave me enough gold for mobility boots. These boots are designed for roaming, and there's no better time to do that than during the early gaming phase. When you're roaming mid, make sure to check the minimap or the lane itself like this. Try to gather as much information as you can. What information did you get from watching that? For me, I got two information. Her W is back from cooldown by the time I gank. Second, she warded this bush. That movement in mid lane after Ramus gank is a warding movement. In high elo, players can fake it to limit the enemy's gank roots, but this is silver. That's why I position myself out of vision and wait for Ackley to get close. This is a failed gank, but it's still fine because no resources were wasted. Varus is still returned to lane, and on top of that, it's a cannon minion wave. So, I can take it with Relic Shield to boost my quest progression. This is one of the best minion waves you'll want to see when the ADC and you return to lane. It's in the uncomfortable zone, and as the enemy lack wave clear, it is up to us to decide whether to freeze or siege. But Varus starts wave clearing. I will normally ping the ADC to stop, unless it's too late. Varus' call isn't wrong either. We can easily push this wave with Varus and my spells, burn it on the enemy turret, and do some damage in the process. Bane is probably recalling, so this is a viable option. Whereas the reason to freeze is that we don't know of enemy's jungle position. So it's possible for a gank with his bot duo. And on top of that, by freezing, we can save some mana. But the problem with the Varus decision is that he's only auto attacking. If he wants to push, then he must use spells to push it quickly, so that it will burn under the turret. With only auto attacks, they may miss out on some CS, but not the wave. Whereas if it was frozen, it was guaranteed to miss out on the wave. But I also make a mistake here. Both jungler start a boss side. It's normally taken down around 1 minute 40 seconds. And with 5 minute respawn timer, it will be back around 6 minutes 40 seconds. I can see Evelyn topside, which means Vayne likely recalled. So, this is another good roaming opportunity. You can roam into the enemy jungle and ward their blue to know when the jungler is farming. Or, you can also gank mid again. But I didn't. So, I roam at an unpreferred time, exposing Varus of potential 2v1. But, luckily they don't engage. So, I can ward their blue just in time to see Evelyn farming it. And removing the blast cone as well. Varus does really well here. Morgana's Q is gone. So, he ults. His next auto attack removes Morgana's shield, allowing me to CC chain. But Vayne does well and roll out from Varus' Q. Evelyn was caught on my ward, coming to assist this bot lane. And we collapse on her with Ramus from the top side. But she flashes over the wall and is now out of optimal engage zone. So, we return back to lane. Our jungler makes a mistake here of chasing her alone. Which almost gets him killed, but Varus saves him with flash and heal. 
and we gain a kill on top of that. But he makes the same mistake again and dies. If Ramus waited a bit longer, we could have just dived or sieged this turret. So this is a costly mistake. But these players wouldn't be in silver if they didn't make any mistakes, right? The enemies make just as important mistake. Vayne they have recalled, and yet Morgana stays around with pretty low mana, probably due to minion greed or Evelyn's presence. And like I expected, she recalls. The result of this is that Vayne is left alone in lane. We are watching Evelyn's location with that ward earlier. So when she moves away, I look for an opportunity, and as soon as Vayne overextend, I engage. And this is the end of plot lane. That's it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.